Hey, hey YouTubers, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. My name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel on YouTube where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays, DIY stuff on Fridays. If this is your first time here, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. As they say, you gotta feed the algorithms. So, uh, beautiful Friday morning. And by any chance, uh, know that if you land here looking for recipes, if you click on the title of the channel, you'll find a dedicated playlist to all of the cooking recipes. Uh, those videos come out on Tuesdays, and I may step it up a little bit during the holiday season. I've gotten a lot of requests for things like boniatillo, eh, buñuelos, crema catalana, uh, and I have been giving up on making the best coconut flan ever. Uh, I got version 3.0 coming your way soon. I keep, you know, uh, I keep fussing with it. I, I, I haven't given up on that. So anyways, uh, welcome back to the garage uh, where today we are going to be making a zero gap, a table saw zero gap insert. Uh, I, that's the question a lot of people ask me on the video that I made for the table saw stand on this uh, General International TS4100. Um, a lot of people ask me if I had found or if I had made a zero gap insert for the table saw and the answer to that is no I don't think it makes a lot of sense for a manufacturer to set up and, and, and build a product uh, that probably sells for I don't know 30 35 dollars uh, for a hundred dollar saw uh, another an issue with that uh, is that it, it, the way that this uh, what is called the throw insert is made it's a clip on uh, it's kind of challenging so this one will probably be you know 30 some dollars and more like more than likely will have to be metal uh, anyways by the way this is not the only saw with this issue I was looking at the uh, was looking at the Ryobi I look at the DeWalt um, even the new the new one from uh, Harbor Freight uh, very few entry-level saws have uh, throw inserts with screws uh, the, the screws into place like the you know the, the professional saws like delta or you know, jet or even the craftsman's so uh yeah uh this is a little bit of a challenge but i have a few projects uh that i need i would like to have that in place okay it's not only an issue with safety uh i actually i broke a, a blade many many months ago probably two decades ago I was making some strips out of teak and one of the pieces fell inside the saw and somehow got crooked in there and it hit the blade on the side and actually cracked the blade. Uh, one of those 72 tooth uh, blades that have the, the cracks on it with a little piece of metal on it. Uh, it actually cracked and, and, and the you know I noticed it because after I turned it off and I turned it back on, I, I felt the vibration and the blade was wobbling. Uh, one of the sections was actually twisted. So uh, yeah, it's an issue with safety, but also if you are cutting things like um, plexiglass, any type of composite, uh, even plywood, plywood that have thin veneers, you're gonna get a much cleaner, uh, you know, better finish uh, when you have a zero gap insert on your table saw than if you were just to have a gap. So uh, with that said, uh, obviously we cannot buy this thing, so we're gonna have to make one. Check this out. In my opinion, everyone should have a table saw zero clearance insert. It is a matter of safety, not luxury. However, I understand that some people may rarely cut thin strips and things like that. Then there is the case where you may be going over to your friend's house to do a little bit of work and his table saw doesn't have a zero clearance insert. In that case, here's a little hack that has got me out of more than one jam in the past. Okay, now to the build. For this build, I'm gonna fall back into my favorite high density polypropylene board, that being the $8 cutting board from Sam's Club. I have a piece that is long enough. All we need to do is figure out how wide it needs to be. The OEM table saw insert has ridges on both sides of the blade for stiffness. So our plate will have to fit in between them. I also wanted to point out that this table saw deck has two threaded provisions that could be used for a serial clearance insert, but given that the deck relief is only 1 16th of an inch, more than likely it will have to be made out of metal as well. 
So after measuring the gap, we need a 2 inch strip to be cut from the polypropylene board. With that out of the way, the next step is to build a jig so that we can machine this piece. I'm using scraps to make a simple L-shaped jig that allows me to attach the polypropylene strip to it so that my fingers doesn't have to get near the blade. This doesn't have to be nothing fancy, it's just a provisional jig so that we can machine this part. However, do make sure that you sand all imperfections, especially on the face. As you can see, the OEM table saw insert is offset to one side. So that means that we need to figure out how much is that offset. I could have just grabbed some calibers, but I think a marker will suffice. Aside from the offset, we also need to figure out the placement of the blade within this gap. With our markings in place, I went ahead and fastened the polypropylene strips into the jig using the thinnest screws that I could find. Ideally, some number four by one, one and a quarter would be best, but all I have is a number six by one and a half, and those will have to do. The two holes that I drill are where I perceive where the blade is gonna come up through. So if I'm right, the blade should erase them once I bring it up. The first cut we're making is about 116 by a half an inch. Using a 116 strip of aluminum, I checked for the depth, everything looked good, so I proceeded to make cut number two and number three on the same side. These are a quarter inch deep by a quarter inch wide. Since the blade is only an eighth, this requires two passes. We're then gonna flip the polypropylene strip and make three more cuts on the other side. The first one is also 116 deep, but this time 0.800 thousands high. I was hoping that my perception over the blade position was going to be was accurate, but I was off by about 132. Barely nipped the two screws. As I was recording the voiceover, I was struggling to explain this in words. So I decided to make a little drawing. So here we go. Here is the polypropylene piece, which measures two inches by half an inch thick. And I'm making this to scale. I just want to paint a picture in your head. This is the first cut. Then cut number two and number three. Then we flip the piece and make cut four, five, and six. We can then cut it to length and we are ready for mounting. For mounting, I will be using a total of eight number four by a half an inch flat heads. I made all the holes at equal distance from the edge on the drill press and then stacked the left and right lanes. I then manually kind of sunk all the holes, pre-drill and install all the screws using a screwdriver, not a drill. This is important so that you do not strip them. It is very easy to strip the polypropylene. We are now ready for a dry fit and cutting our zero gap, but not before filling all the holes with hot glue. I'm not sure if this will stick to polypropylene or how long it will last, but I figure it's worth a try. To cut the gap, simply turn on the saw and bring the blade up slowly. My friends, this is it. This project took me about an hour to complete and I do have to apologize for the video quality. The GoPro on a cloudy day is a no-go. However, I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.